In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use TreeShade to quickly add photorealistic animated tree shadows inside of any 3D scene. If you don't already have TreeShade but want to check it out, I have a free sample that you can download below. Hi, I'm Henrik, the creator of TreeShade. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to import and set up the assets. I will be using Max and V-Ray, but all the principles are really simple and should translate into any 3D software. Secondly, I'm going to talk about tree angles and which ones to pick depending on what your lighting situation is. And then thirdly, I'm going to cover playback rates and how you can use those to either speed up or slow down the tree animation. And then finally, I'm going to offer you some tips on how you can get an even more photorealistic result by layering different types of trees on top of each other. So that's the overview. Let's get into it. This is my basic setup in Max. I just have a simple scene with a teapot and a sunlight. So first thing I want to do is open up the material editor and add a V-Ray bitmap. Navigate to your texture folder. Um, let's just focus on an apple tree for now and pick the large one. Um, in here, it doesn't matter which one of these frames you select. Uh, what does matter is that you enable sequence. Uh, this will tell Max that this is a sequence of images and not just a single still image. Open that. And next thing I want to do is disable any color space gamma correction because this is going to function as an alpha channel so we don't want any gamma applied to it. So just set this one to none and set the RGB primaries to raw. And I want to disable tiling so we don't get the tree trunk appearing at the top. Finally, I'll change the playback rate under the time parameters to two instead of one. All right. Let's plug this into a V-Ray material and hit the opacity channel. All right, we have a nice cutout tree up here and I'll just change the color to black. So it's a bit easier to see what's going on and rename this apple tree. Okay, so now we need to create some geometry to put the material on. So I'm just gonna go into a side view and create a plane object. Um, it doesn't matter how big you make it, but you need to make sure that it's a square and not a rectangle. That way you won't introduce any squeezing or stretching in the textures. All right, let's apply the tree to that one. And let's see if it works. All right, we have an animated tree. Easy peasy. If for some reason you don't have as smooth a playback in here as I do, it might be because you haven't set your viewport quality to high, or you have a ton of other stuff in your scene that's bogging the whole thing down. Next up, I want to make it a bit easier for me to scale and place these. So instead of doing this, I'm just gonna go in here, affect the pivot point, and move it all the way down here to the base of the trunk. And that way, when I scale it, there we go, it's gonna scale from the trunk, so I don't have to move it each time I scale it as well. Before I hit render, I just wanna do one more thing, and that is go into object properties, because I personally never want to have the tree visible except for the shadows that it's casting into the scene. So I'm just going to disable visible to camera and visible to reflection refraction. And that way, when I hit render, you should get something like this. So we basically have an invisible phantom tree, but it's casting shadows into the shot. And from here on, this is basically like any other setup where you're looking through the camera or the viewport of your choice and then you're placing your lights uh, and everything else out here and then some sort of art directing um, until you end up with a result that you like. Let's try something like this. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm just gonna render this out and then we can have a look at it. One of the things that I really love about tree shadows is that whenever you have small negative spaces or pinholes sort of appearing in the tree, 
you get these dancing bulky shapes on any object that the shadow hits, uh, which I think has a really nice aesthetic to it. Next up, I'm going to talk a bit about different tree angles and seasons and how and why you should pick one over the other. So all of these trees are completely flat, but depending on the light we're trying to set up, we're going to need different angles to choose from to achieve the best result. So in this scene here, I have three variations of the same tree, the large apple tree, the summer version. The one here on the right is the front view. And the one in the center here is the angle view, which is angled and captured at approximately 45 degrees. So I've matched the card to approximately 45 degrees in here. And finally, we have a top view over here. So all of these are essentially the same tree. They're just captured from three different angles. They all have the same level of detail and they're all animated. So right now we're looking at the front variant and this is good for any sort of low angled lighting situation up to maybe even pushing here uh, like 40 or 50. Um, in the end, I, I wouldn't worry too much about, you know, is this too far, this is too whatever. I would simply look at the result. Um, if the end result is looking good, then don't worry about whether you, you know, pick the right or the wrong angle. Um, and let's say you push this way far. Uh, now it starts to fall apart, but even here you do have options. Uh, with the same tree, you can simply rotate this scale it up, maybe move it back a bit. And let's just have a look at the shadow. Um, this is perfectly usable to me, but let's have a look at the next variant. And this is the angled variant. And just like I showed on the first one, um, you don't have to necessarily set it at the exact angle. You do have some latitude in how you rotate and, and place these um, and where you put your light source. In the end, it's all about the end result. And if it looks good, then it looks good, no matter how you got there. And the final variant is called top. And this is really great for that 12 o'clock noon lighting. Um, another feature of this is that it doesn't have a trunk going out to either of the sides. And that makes it uh, very useful for filling up a scene. Let's just make a few copies of these. And I'm just gonna spread these out a little bit. Um, sort of create a whole canopy in here. And then once you do that, you can just rotate these at will um, and scale them a little bit to create some more randomness. Um, and yeah, this is just a really quick way to fill your scene with uh, shadows, if that's something you need. Um, all right, that's it for the angles. So let's talk about the seasons and the classifications for the trees. In this folder over here, I have all of the variants for the apple tree, um, 27 in total. And over here, I have the first frame from each of these folders over here. So these are divided into groups of nine. All of the ones called Apple A, that's the front view. All the Apple B, that's the angle or 45 degree view. And all the Apple C is the top view. Now, some of these have a suffix. The ones that don't, that's the summer version. The one called F, that's the fall version. And the one called W, that's the winter version. And as I go down this list, you might notice that the only thing that changes between these seasons is the amount of leaves on the tree. All of the branch and tree animation is going to be exactly the same when you switch between seasons. So if you want to, you can even blend from one season to another uh, during an animation. If you need a more comprehensive overview, I have a whole catalog video where you can watch all the different variants in animated form and then compare. Um, I'm going to put a link below the video for that. Every single tree in TreeShape has 240 frames of looping animation. But it's been designed in a way so you're not really supposed to play back all the frames unless you really need them. 
remember when I set the playback rate in here for the bitmap loader to 2? The reason I did that is because all of the trees have been designed with options for slow motion or fast motion in mind. So this is the result that you get when you play back only every second frame or only 120 frames out of the total 240. And if you change this to one, so you play back every single frame, you're gonna get this um, slow motion or a bit more dreamlike or smooth motion in the trees. And finally, if you want some more chaotic movement or more wind in the trees, you can set the playback rate to three. And then you get this result over here. The idea is just to give you some more options in terms of playback. And this is probably a closer approximation of what it will look like in your scene. In this scene, I wanted to create a bit more depth and a bit more variation in the shadows. And I'm gonna show you how I set that up. So this is what the viewport looks like. I have a total of seven different trees in here, spread across apple, berg, and oak types. And let's just shut these off and then build it up one by one so you can see what's going on. So first I have an apple tree uh, up here and another one that hits the car down here. And if we take a look from the side, you can see that these are different seasons and placed at different different uh, depths in terms of what they're casting shadow on and probably scaled and rotated uh, a little bit differently. And I have a large berg in here. This is the winter edition. So it has zero leaves on it, but this particular tree has a ton of very fine branch detail. And because this is placed even farther away, you're gonna get these very soft, smooth shadows in here. And I have another one of those. And for this one, I've actually cropped the geometry because I only wanted it to hit this triangle up here. So if I just remove the slice modifier, you can see that the plane object is actually hitting this part of the building or structure up here. Um, and I mean, you might, might want to have these very defined shadows. Um, I could just move it a bit farther back and then it's not visibly cutting into the building and you get this and you still get a bit of that over there. Uh, this is totally up to you how you want to play that out. Um, I just wanted to show you that this is a another way that you can sort of art direct or crop out uh, details you don't want. Uh, you could also put in an edit mesh or edit poly modifier on the object and simply delete the parts of the plane that you don't want to appear or casting shadows. Moving on to the next one. This is a large oak tree uh, placed a bit far away here just for these uh, soft foreground shadows. And then finally, another oak to hit that highlight spot on the car. And then a final one to pluck this hole down here. Um, so the way I went about this is basically just start by having one tree in here. And then I'll just, you know, move that around, um, rotate it, scale it, um, do, do whatever I need to do uh, to figure out what looks good. Uh, and I'm always just looking through the camera uh, as you would when you're doing uh, any sort of lighting or art direction. Um, and this is just applied to all the trees one by one. Um, and then in here in the material editor, I just started simply with adding one apple tree uh, and just copying that out. So all the material or shading setup is exactly the same for all these trees, but the texture is different. Now, in the case of this apple large angled tree, these are actually identical except for the season. 
And that means the animation is going to be identical as well. And I'd like to avoid that. And one way that you can go about it is simply go in here and set a different start frame. So this one up here, the summer version, this is starting at frame 160. And the other one down here starts at frame zero. This way, you're not going to have the two trees sort of animating in sync, but you're going to have them offset a bit so they don't look too similar. And when I set this to 160, it doesn't mean that the first 160 frames are just going to be static. As long as the end condition here is set to loop, which it is by default, then it's going to loop from 160 in both directions. And the same principle applies to all the different uh, tree types in here. Um, this is a large burg, and I have two of those, uh, both winter editions. So the second one starts at 140. And for the oak trees, I believe, yeah, um, most of these have has a playback rate of two, but for this one, I set the playback rate to three because the foreground oak tree here, I felt the shadows were moving a bit too slowly. So I just tried speeding it up and I thought that worked better. So there's not a silver bullet for what will work best in all conditions. Uh, you really just have to try it out. I would always start with a playback rate of two, as I mentioned before. But this is just something that you need to, you know, do a quick clay render and then try it out. As I mentioned, I have three different types of trees in here. Even if you don't have that, let's say you just have the apple tree or the birk tree, so you're going to get 27 variations within every single tree. Um, I think it's nice to blend different types together, but you don't necessarily need to. That concludes the tutorial. If you feel like there's something that you wanted me to cover a bit more in depth, or you have any other questions I didn't answer already, please do let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, that's it for me. Bye bye.